Hey, it's Joe Glass from Automator, and uh, here's another episode of What We Automated This Week. Let me get to my desktop, and um, I'm going to be a little faster. I didn't get to record this yesterday on Sunday. I uh, just had a lot going on, so let me jump into this. Uh, the scripts for working for Dr. Rob. So um, all of these, actually, these, these first bunch here are all, obviously, you can see they're structured under client work. <coughs> um, we have two different radiologists we're helping at the moment. Um, Dr. Rob was referred to as from Danny H, and he is just beginning to learn automation stuff. And so, Danny, we've been helping do more advanced stuff. Like one of the things was he uh, he keeps track of how productive he is, and he uploads stuff to a a Google worksheet. But every day he wants it to go update that information, and so we automated uploading the stats for him when he's exiting out of a program and. After we upload it, then we, we rename it, and then we need to move that worksheet to the beginning, which we were going to try to use. I think it's Action Script is what is built into Google Sheets. And just from talking to Isaiah, it made more sense. Just, there was a plugin that we found an extension for doing it, so we just did it with that. Yeah, we've got some really cool stuff we're doing with uh, Danny. For a, a lot of radiologists, are really we're helping them a lot, and it's amazing how repetitive their work is and this is really helping them danny or um, no sorry rob this morning is like yeah i, I feel like a Chris, a kid on christmas morning um because it's just saving them so much time so it's really cool to get that kind of feedback all right let's go into let's see here more stuff with danny doing stuff with rafadium yeah updating it that was with the the google sheets also i think we're using rafadium to update those pages one of the things one of the tools they use it requires chrome to be at a hundred percent and so if it's not at 100%, they have to go adjust it. And even though Isaiah's built in a quick, simple tool, we made a separate script to be able to give to radiologists because we're like, hey, you know what? Um, this is something, and it can be done, and we did it with the control send uh, to a certain toolbar on the Chrome, which is usually visible. So it doesn't have to be active, so it just has to exist. So it's nice we're not even activating it. It will reset the zoom to 100, which is awesome. Um, someone, I think they wrote me an email saying, hey, how, how, or maybe it was on one, my video on it, I forget, but the, uh, how do you get the IP address in V2? And so I just thought about it. I remember I got that initial example from the auto hotkey help. So I went and looked at the V2 and sure enough, now they did change how IP addresses are done in V2. So it's a little different. It's no longer, if I remember correctly, an array. Um, or at least it's stored very differently. But the code itself was still very simple. And, interesting enough, somebody else asked me about my mouse over, if I move my hand, my mouse over the taskbar and scroll up and down, um, how do we automate that? So both of those, I think, Lexicos or someone else had solved. So I converted them, you know, did it into V2 and then gave them the code. But both of those are really great. Check them out. If uh, Just look at the auto hockey documentation on on that. Uh, look, look for taskbar for that second one and IP address for the first one. Um Let's see here. Here, we, we, we have our tool for looking across all of our subtitles, which we're building a tool which we can um, make it available. The problem is it's going to have to be updated because every time we release a video, we have, I don't know, probably close to 1,500 now. I don't know. There's a lot of videos on AutoHotKey. And, but every week, we have three hero calls, three hours of hero calls. And I think we're up to like 270 hours now of recorded calls, which... They're unlisted, and so we can't give that list to everybody because these are hero members paying for their privacy and stuff. So we created a, a separate database for them, and then um, Isaias was working on building the metadata to grab it because the metadata we get via API. The other one we get uh, do versus with a Chrome extension to extract the transcripts. We dump it all into a SQLite database which they'll have locally on their computers, and then can search across all of our videos. Um, it's really, it's a really cool tool, and uh, it, it allows them to find anywhere in the transcripts of where something was mentioned and jump right to it, so it's, it's really cool. So, very cool. This Blur tool, we finally got that. It's on online. I haven't released a video yet, but it's, it's out there of, you can quickly blur a section of your screen. So if you're sharing your desktop a lot, that can be really hard because you might have some something you want to keep private. This allows you, much like the window snipping tool, like right here, if I just go like this, you know, I grab that. Now, my DPI is um, on, so it made that a little weird. But the blur, imagine this is a blur, right? You can cover things, and it blurs what's behind it. 
So I'm not going to go watch the tool, but you get the idea. Uh, if you're interested at all at blurring parts of your screen, it's a really cool tool. It attaches to the window behind it. And I think at some point we're going to combine the window snipping tool and the blur tool because they're, even though you use them very differently, how you use them and the fact you're grabbing a, a section of your screen is very similar. So to me, they, it makes sense for them to go together. So at some point we'll put that together. This morning, Irfan, so I'm recording this on Monday instead of Sunday, um, so it's actually eight days of Auto Hotkey, but he, uh, we were working on getting giving people tools for using FFmpeg and detecting if it's your path. The problem is, um, oh yeah, I got my calendar to do too, yeah. The problem is that some people aren't admins of their computers, and if you're not an admin, you can't set your system path. Well, there's also like a user path, so... We updated our script to set the user path to include the folder where FFmpeg is located. And so we're updating all of our FFmpeg tools to, to have that functionality. That way you can set where it is, and then it doesn't matter where it's located. You can just use our tools to like combine videos, or reduce the file size, or um, we made a new one, which should be in here somewhere, where we you can take an audio file, add a picture to it, and upload it. Anyway, so you get the idea. Um, that's still the Chrome resetting our notify class if you haven't looked at it, it's very very cool it does some great notifications on your screen um, it does sounds also and you can control for whether it's in the center of your screen or off the side you control the background colors and fonts and font sizes and, and everything you include pictures it's, it's, it's really popular here's that podcast to video so you can take now we initially called it mp3 to mp4 but it's really almost like any audio file type you want you give it a picture now we set the picture to be required to be a certain dimension so it has the same ratio but it's the common 1024 by 768 and then the other one which at 1280 by 960 i forget what it is but um has to be one of those sizes but it allows you a lot of people have podcasts on youtube where they upload a picture they have the mp3 file but they want to upload a picture with it and put it in youtube so this tool makes it very very easy to do that um, Irfan actually found a better, not a better, well, slightly better, a less complex way to track the process of FFmpeg. So in our other tools, because we noticed on the newer versions of FFmpeg that the approach we that I paid a tidbit to do a, several years ago, it was breaking on the newer version of FFmpeg. No, no fault of him, so they changed FFmpeg. But Irfan found a, a different way to go and get that information, and it seems to work across the different versions. And it's simpler code, and it's in V2. So we'll be updating our scripts to V2 in FFmpeg, which will be cool for uh, managing it. So that's a, especially since the death of AutoHockey V1 the other day, which we just talked about that um, on the, the call uh, yesterday. We recorded a video on that, I think. Um, this video merger, this is where, and it's so weird. Some guy wrote me and saw what I did years ago, and so we put it back together, and, and I, I still, I'm waiting for him to send me some MP4 files to try to merge them, because it works great for me, but it doesn't work for him. And we're I, It's, of course, hard without sharing screens or something to know why it's breaking. He just basically says it doesn't work, and I'm like, I okay, I don't know what to do. Um, Flexifinder, <clears throat> this, if you go to the automator.com slash Flexifinder, you'll see... Um, the tool, and it's the it's a new really cool tool. So and you can search auto hotkey for auto hotkey stuff, but you can search for anything, right? You can store the domains you want to be searching for. There's a dark mode versus a light mode. You can also you know wrap it with double quotes. You can change the font size, which I know a lot of people. If you're older, you like having a bigger font, so it's pretty cool. It's got a lot of flexibility. Prompt assistant. Isaiah found another little bug in Prompt Assistant. We updated it. It's, it's an amazing tool. Uh, we need to do more documentation videos, I think. But overall, you can launch you know, anything. You can have snippets. And anything Auto Hockey can do, you can basically execute it within it, which is really cool. Our screen banner. So we're... When, when I often, right now, if I'm in OBS, often I'll have a banner over my head on Zoom calls. And I'll put up the URLs to things. And I said, hey, why don't we make it where... Because typically on a hero call, Isaiah is sharing his screen. Why don't we make it where I can type, and on his computer, it's going to show up on screen. And then I didn't have less to do in editing. So that's really cool. We've been working on it. Um, Rizwan's been working on that, getting it set up right. It, um, it's an interesting script because, yes, Isaiah might 
hit a hot key and change the, the title bar. But usually when he's sharing a screen, that's not something you want to do, right? Um, he could do it on a different monitor, but he's already lecturing and stuff. And so I'm running it on my computer. It'll save it to an any file. That remote computer is going to check the any file timestamps and say, hey, if there's a newer version, go grab the Texas Air and display it on his screen. So that should be a really, really cool, helpful tool for us. Um, and I think a lot of people. Um, apparently we're doing something with shell hooks, which are amazing. And the Telegram bot, we have... <laughs> there's still, I got to tell... Irfan to take a look at that. The time is correct. It'll say how long before the next Telegram um, hero call. But even though I'll double click and it tells me it's, oh, it's an hour, and I look at the clock and it's right, the reminders that it gets automated that get posted to the hero group in, in Telegram are wrong. They're always an hour late. So it's something very weird. But, um, of course, when you're dealing with time, oh, it's, it's, you know, it's not an easy topic to program around. So we, we need to go look at that. We don't have a public version of that, but if you're interested and you want something to automate Telegram, um, let me know and we can debrand some of that information. Hopefully, I, I don't know if our API keys, you do have to also set up a bot in your group um, or whatever to, in order to automate it, but it's uh, it's really cool. Yeah, I say I'm busy. Um, and... So the Ultimate Spy, we made some minor updates to that. Isaias mentioned that when it was on slower computers, when you're switching between the different tools, that it, it would take too long time out and basically shut down. So we, we did, I think Irfan did that. I don't know if the download's updated. I'm going to have to ask Irfan to make sure he's updated the download. If you haven't played with Ultimate Spy, go check it out. It's an amazing tool. It's uh, I, We really should be charging, and not just charging a little. We should be charging a lot because it's a, it's a phenomenal tool to have in your toolkit. Not only does it tell you some of the approaches you can use, but it allows you to switch to other discovery tools to use that. Like, let's say if it says that UIA is available, you can switch to the UIA inspector. Or let's say controls are available. It'll switch to, you have your choice of simple spy, which is more for people that are just learning stuff. Or um, I think it was Algamus uh, window spy tool uh, for looking at controls. Uh, we also have our Ultimator Spy in there, which is, we think, far better than the built-in with a spy tool. Uh, anyway, it's got a lot of great tools. I hope you enjoyed that. If uh, Sorry for the rush, but this was done during lunch hour, and we have another client call here coming up. And just got trying to find time to, to squeeze these things in there. Hope you have an awesome day. Please like the video if you learned something. It really helps us out. Remember, we have uh, great courses, and there's a double your money back guarantee. So if you're wanting to learn how to hotkey, check out our courses. Um, or consider the Hero Group. That first month is $1.99, I think. And it gives you, gives you a tryout period for a month and to see if you like it. Everyone, as long as they attend the calls, they love it. Like, it's amazing. You learn a lot, and you get to hang out with other people that are very similar to you. Um, and it's just a great time. So, cheers. <laughs>